Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Katie Cook. Nearly all 50 states are now partially reopened, even as the number of coronavirus cases in the United States is nearly one and a half million people. More than 88,000 have died. Jamie Yukis reports from Los Angeles. Green flag, NASCAR is back. NASCAR drivers started their engines again Sunday in South Carolina without fans. In hard hit New Orleans, restaurants were able to reopen at 25% capacity. Universal Studio Shopping District in Orlando welcomed visitors wearing masks. And gyms in Florida will be able to open their doors Monday. But New York City beaches will remain closed over the Memorial Day weekend. And the scene you see there, that is a typical beach day when things are normal in New York City. That cannot happen anytime soon. Texas reported its highest one-day total of new coronavirus cases on Saturday. More than 700 are believed to be from meatpacking plants in the Amarillo area. A Wall Street Journal analysis of nationwide COVID cases from the end of April into May finds new cases in rural areas were 30 percent higher than those in cities. On CBS's Face the Nation, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar elaborated on vaccine development the White House has dubbed Operation Warp Speed. So what we're doing is bringing the inefficiency out of the development process to make the development side faster to get to safe and effective vaccines. And at the same time, we're going to scale up commercial size manufacturing right. and produce hundreds of millions of doses at risk. They may not pan out. They might not prove to be safe and effective, but we'll have it so we could begin administration right away. And an effective vaccine may be what's required for a full comeback, according to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. This economy will recover. It may take a while. It may take a period of time. It could stretch through the end of next year. We really don't know. Powell says a full recovery in 2021 assumes there won't be a second wave of coronavirus infections. Jamie Yukis, CBS News, Los Angeles. Governor Bashir did not give his daily coronavirus briefing today, but we do have an update on COVID-19 in eastern Kentucky. The Cumberland Valley District Health Department confirmed new cases of COVID-19 in both Jackson and Clay counties this afternoon. The Clay County patient is a woman who is currently hospitalized. The Jackson in Jackson County has two new cases, a 54-year-old woman and a 36-year-old woman. There are now 61 cases in Jackson County and two cases in Clay County. County. Now, for more information on COVID-19 in eastern Kentucky, you can head on over to our website, WIMT.com. Well, it is something we have all been anticipating since quarantine began. Shops and restaurants are now starting to reopen to the public. But while it may be exciting to get out of the house and go back to our favorite restaurants again, owners are more cautious about the reopenings. The food industry has not had the burden of social distancing its customers in the past, and this could be more challenging than it seems. We need more staff to be able to let people in, figure out the numbers, sanitize those doors. Um, it's just much more staffing for much less business, and it just makes it really difficult. Many of the restaurants opening back up soon say they want you to call for more information on how they're handling reopening before you stop by. Some are asking you to make a reservation if possible. And this evening, we are learning that a Knox County man is behind bars after officials say he attacked a woman with an axe. Deputies responded to an assault report in the Lick Branch, Lick Branch area yesterday. When they arrived, deputies found a woman with severe trauma and bleeding. After investigating, deputies said David Gray came to her home intoxicated and swung an axe at the victim's head. He lived nearby. Now the victim was flown to UK Medical Center for treatment and Gray was arrested and taken to the Knox County Jail and he faces a first degree assault charge. One person is dead after a motorcycle and car collided in Madison County. Officials from the Waco Volunteer Fire and Rescue say they responded to the crash yesterday, yesterday afternoon in the area of Flint Road and College Hill Road. Officials say 65-year-old Thomas David Foley was driving the motorcycle and died after crashing into the car head-on. Kentucky State Police and the Richmond Police Department are investigating the crash. 
One person was found dead in Williamson, West Virginia after a fire yesterday morning. Williamson police say the remains were found in the rubble of a six unit apartment building. The police report says people saw someone assaulted in the apartment and then people ran out moments before the flames appeared. One witness told police they never saw the person who was assaulted get out of the building. Investigators say James Church has been arrested and charged with murder and arson. Warrants are out for two other people supposedly involved and the name of the victim has not been released. Two firefighters and three people who lived at the apartment complex were treated for burns and other injuries from the fire. Well, see I'm sorry, Wasiato Winds Golf Course in Bell County reopened on Friday after a massive flood in early February caused the, caused the course to close. WYMT's Dakota Makris talked with golf course officials and players who are excited about the reopening. That sound is finally echoing throughout the mountains at Wasiato Winds. Not again. Mud and debris covered the golf course after flooding in early February. We got so much it uh, covered the entire golf course. Cumberland River uh, overflowed and it, put, it shut us down. So we had roughly 75 acres to 100 acres of mud to remove. This video shows the challenges of the cleanup. The hardest part of the cleanup was the elements. You know, as soon as we started, it was 37 degrees, sleeting, snowing, and rain. But the hard work paid off. For golfers like Madeline Fultz, she is happy to be on the green once again with her dad. It's a really nice place to golf. It's nice and cool. It's a quality place and it's really nice. Abby Howard is a first tee golfer. She and her grandfather drive an hour away to golf. So the news of the flooding was upsetting. I was really sad because I love coming over here and spending my summers. Um, I'm over here probably three to four times a week every summer. Families can once again spend time bonding over a sport they love. In Bell County, Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Wasiato Winds Golf Course wants to thank all of the hardworking State Park staff and the golf maintenance crews who made it possible for the course to reopen. Well, we had another beautiful day here in the mountains, and if you haven't been able to get out and enjoy it, you're going to want to make sure to do that as soon as possible because these nice conditions aren't going to be sticking around much longer. But looking at these beautiful current conditions, you can see at our WYMT camera here in the hazard, you can see those nice dry conditions that we're seeing now, and we're just seeing plenty of sunshine. A few clouds in the sky here and there, but overall still beautiful conditions, and our temperatures are nice and warm as as well a lot of us today practically all of us I think got into those mid 80s so we saw some very warm weather so hopefully you were able to get out and enjoy those nice temperatures that we did see today and you can see these winds really helped us out we do have these winds the kind of a little bit more breezier today and they have been coming out of the south so that's what's been bringing up all that nice warm air and really helped us warm up to those nice beautiful temperatures today like we like to be seen but as we head into those later evening hours tonight and we see those temperatures start to cool down. We're also going to start to see some rain chances increase and by the time we wake up tomorrow morning we'll be looking at a little bit of soggy weather and we're going to pretty much continue to see that all day tomorrow and by the tomorrow afternoon it's really going to get a little on the soggy side. Katie? All right, thank you, Brooke. A Harlan County native earned her spot on the 28-time National Championship Moorhead State University co-ed cheerleading team. WYMT's Madison Pergram tells us about her road to success. Nothing good comes easy, and nothing easy is really that great. That is the motto 18-year-old Allie Allred lives by as she worked towards becoming a collegiate athlete. Being a collegiate cheerleader has always been a dream of mine. I think it's a dream of any little girl whenever you see all the crazy stunts that they do and all the exciting things. But rising to that level is not easy and it becomes more of a lifestyle. What a typical week would look like, I would go at least two to three times a week to neighboring counties at least an hour away just to do a stunt private or just to get any extra work in that I could. All the preparation building up for that one moment. Tryouts for a nationally renowned team which due to the coronavirus was done over video. When you prepare you're always in a gym or you're like in that environment so it's kind of hard to bring that environment to your backyard in the grass you know. 
but it was exciting and it was fun. It kind of gave a fun twist to the tryout process, kind of took the nerves away. Soon becoming one of the newest members of the MSU squad. I'm just excited to get started and see what it holds and I really just want to grow as an athlete and see where I can get. Throughout her journey, she had her own squad as they cheer her on from the sidelines. People would message on my way or be like, you're going to do great. We love you. And just like little things like it's so true and genuine and the love that I have for my small town and the people from it. It's like I can never begin to put into words how grateful I am for that. And extending that same spirit to others who may be watching. To any little girl from Eastern Kentucky, your dreams are never too big and you can accomplish anything that you set your mind to. As she takes part in a tradition of success. Go Eagles! <laughs> Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. Allred says that she is excited for the year ahead, saying Moorhead is the perfect fit because the town reminds her of her own hometown of Harlan. We have shown you multiple stories of high schools in the mountains holding parades for their graduates. Today, Floyd Central High School will honor its class of 2020. The parade is underway now, and WYMT's Camille Gear is there for the celebration. She'll have more on the parade coming up at 11. Well, we all have different mountains to overcome in life. For many, one of those right now is COVID-19. Megan James tells us about one Kentucky native who is climbing mountains to help people tackle their own. In many ways, it's kind of fitting that um, I should go and find some physical mountains to climb as we as a global community are kind of trying to come together. And tackle the mountain of problems COVID-19 has caused. The pandemic knows no borders, so it is um, affecting everyone all over the world and it particularly impacts um, the most vulnerable the worst. Um, so humanitarian organizations are playing a key role uh, and being able to provide for these vulnerable populations and being able to keep them safe. That's why Woodrum will be climbing all of Colorado's 14ers. That's mountains with peaks over 14,000 feet, all to raise money for Shelterbox. It's an organization that provides shelter, cooking tools, and the necessities for those who need it. Um, but the goal is to raise $1,400 per mountain, so a total of $82,000 by the end of this incredible journey. Um, all for shelter box and all for their current COVID-19 uh, um, emergency relief of people. Because everyone needs shelter and a way to stay clean, especially when sheltering in place. Woodrum is ready to tackle those 58 mountains for the people who need it the most. It's going to be very challenging, but um, I'm really, really excited for this opportunity. In Lexington, Megan James, WKYT. Coming up on Mountain News Weekend Edition, find out the legacy former Miss Kentucky Phyllis George leaves behind after her death. And we have a cold front approaching. I'll provide more details on this and the soggy weather it'll be bringing coming up.